when you see a plant you see its stem leaves flowers etc you know that it has roots under the ground even if you can't see it have you ever wondered if plants have tissues just like we do we know that tissues are made up of cells of the same type performing a specific function they might not look like they have a lot of tissues but the plant body is made up of millions of cells that are organized into different types of tissues plant tissue systems can be mainly categorized into three categories they are the epidermal tissue system ground tissue system and the vascular tissue system now just because i've drawn arrow marks from different parts of the plant doesn't mean that these tissue systems are found only there it can be thought of as going from the outermost layer to the innermost layer so the outermost layer of the plant is made up of the epidermal tissue system below that is the ground tissue system and below that is the vascular tissue system in this video we'll focus on the outermost layer of tissues called the epidermal tissue systems we'll tackle the ground tissue system and vascular tissue system in a later video the epidermal tissue system shares its name with our own skin the outer layer of our skin is also called the epidermis the epidermal tissue system is made up of the epidermal cells epidermal hair and the stomata and it looks something like this the epidermal cells that make up the epidermis are elongated parenchymatous cells that are located quite close to each other with no intercellular space the main function of the epidermis is to offer protection from the external factors The epidermis of leaves and stems are covered by a waxy layer called the cuticle. Now the function of the cuticle is to prevent water loss from the plants by the process of transpiration. Cuticle is noticeably absent in roots. Can you think of a reason why? Well, yes, if cuticle is present in roots, then roots cannot absorb water. That's why roots do not have cuticle. The epidermis also has tiny projections or extensions called the epidermal hair. In stems, this epidermal hair is called trichome and in roots it is called root hair. The function of root hairs is to increase the surface area of water absorption. The more number of root hairs there is, the more the area there is for water to be absorbed into the plant. In stem the function of the trichome is to protect the plant from damage like from herbivores eating the plant stomata are the structures through which gas exchange takes place and gas exchange as we know is the entry of carbon dioxide into the plant and exit of oxygen from the plant and it is needed for photosynthesis so let's take a look at how stomata looks like so there are two types of stomata one that looks something like this under the microscope and one that looks something like this under the microscopes and these are the different parts of a stomata the actual opening through which the gas exchange takes place is called the stomatal pore or the stoma now bordering the stomatal pore on both sides are the guard cells there are two guard cells the function of the guard cells is to regulate the opening and closing of the stomatal pore why do they have to be regulated why can't the stomatal pore be open always well gas exchange is not the only process that occurs through the stomatal pore water loss by the process of transpiration also occurs through the stomatal pore to prevent excess water loss guard cells regulate the opening and closing of the stomata surrounding the guard cells are the subsidiary cells they protect the guard cells and also act as reservoirs for ions and water now based on the shape of the guard cells stomata can be of two types one is a bean shaped stomata which has the bean shaped guard cell and this is found in dicots and the other is a dumbbell shaped guard cell the guard cells are shaped like a dumbbell that we use in gym and this dumbbell shaped guard cells can be seen in monocots the guard cells have uneven thickenings in their cell wall the inner cell wall of guard cells that is close to the stomatal pore is thicker compared to the outer cell wall of the guard cells that is away from the stomatal pore now this is important for them to open and close the stomatal pore and let's see how they function to open and close the stomatal pore 
So this is how the stoma looks like when it is closed. When the stomatal pore is closed, the guard cells are shaped like this. The guard cells are closed. When the plant decides, I want to perform photosynthesis, I want to take in carbon dioxide, the guard cells begin to swell up. And how does that happen? Water and ions from the subsidiary cells flows into the guard cells. And this causes the guard cells to swell up like this. The inner part of the guard cell sort of pinches up like this, exposing the stomatal pore. So now the stoma is exposed, the stomatal pore is exposed and gas exchange can take place. When the plant decides enough of gas exchange, now I want to preserve water, now I want to conserve water. Whatever ions and water are there inside the guard cell, they leave the guard cells. And this causes the guard cells to shrink again. And then the stomata is closed. So by this process, the swelling up and shrinking of guard cells, the stomatal opening is open and closed depending on the plant's needs.